Video transitions are great, but in-camera transitions are even better. So in this video, I wanna show you how to film them and how to edit them. You can do these in-camera transitions with both your camera as well as your phone. So I will be explaining both. The first transition is a very popular transition that is often used in vlogs as well as in B-roll, and that is the black to black transition. And a great example of this is putting your hands on the lens or to your chest. Now, if you wanna do the same transition in B-roll, what you can do is in one clip, you move towards a black or a dark object. And then in the next clip, you move away from a dark or a black object. One tip that I can give you here is to set your exposure. This is super important because if you don't use that, it's not gonna look clean. It's not gonna look professional. It's going to look overexposed. It's, it's just gonna look weird. So the way to do this on your phone is to open your camera app and then just tap and hold the screen until you see this pop up. And on your camera, you obviously wanna shoot in manual. So you wanna make sure that you set your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. Now the next transition is a match transition. And this is actually a match cut, but you can use a match cut very well for transitioning from one location to the other location. You can also do this to change your clothing, literally anything. You can just be as creative as you want. Now the most important thing when you do this is you wanna make sure that you match the framing and you match the position of the object or of yourself. You wanna do this as closely as possible, but we can also fix it a little bit in post. So since we're talking about editing, let's hop into Premiere Pro and learn how to do that. All right, it is time to learn the first two transitions. And the reason why I'm putting these two transitions together is because the editing is the exact same. So the first one is the black to black transition. What we're going to do is we are going to look for the first black frame of the first clip and the last black frame of the second clip. So once you've found your first black frame, hit C on your keyboard to enable the razor tool or press Command K or Control K and then do the same thing for the other clip. And then all there's left to do is delete the two clips right here and then right click on this space and click on ripple delete. So the match transition is very similar. First, what we're going to do is we're going to have to match the clips because as you can see, I did not match them perfectly. In one, I'm standing a little bit further from the camera than the other. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this clip on top of the other clip and then I am going to lower the opacity so that you can see both clips. And then it's just a matter of resizing and repositioning this clip to make it match the other one. Now, when we're done, we're going to up the opacity again to 100. We're going to place it back and then we're going to find a frame that matches the other clip. So what I'm going to do in this case, as I'm jumping up, I'm going to look for the highest point where I'm jumping and I'm going to cut it there in both clips and then I'm going to put the clips together. And the third transition is a whip transition. Now this transition is used all the time in B-roll as well as in vlogs like I just did. And the key here is to make sure that you whip in the same direction because otherwise it's not gonna look good. So in one clip, you wanna move away from the subject. And then in your next clip, you wanna whip towards your subject. Now the biggest tip that I can give you here is to follow the 180 degree rule. And maybe you've never heard of it and that is totally fine. Basically what it means is that your shutter speed is set to double the frame rate. So if you film in 24 or 25 frames per second, you wanna make sure that your shutter speed is set to one fifth to one fiftieth. That creates the best motion blur. Now the next transition is kind of like a variation of the whip transition and that is the shake transition. Now this transition is so much fun to do in vlogs and it actually works the same as a whip or a pen transition. What we're doing is we're shaking the camera to create a lot of motion blur that distorts the image so that then in post you can just easily cut it and make it look super seamless. So let's find out how to do that. When it comes to making a whip transition look seamless there is actually another tip that I want to give you and that is to take the colors and the brightness into consideration. Now what do I mean by this? I'll show you. In this first transition, I made the mistake to first shoot in a dark area and then in a bright area. Now, because the whip is so fast, I can still get away with it, but it is better and it will look more seamless if the lighting conditions and the colors are similar. So if we look at this one, for example, you can see how seamless this looks compared to the other one. So in order to edit this together and make it look seamless, what we're going to do is in the first clip, we're going to look for a blurry frame and then cut it right there. And then in the other clip, we're also going to look for a blurry frame and cut it there. Then again, delete those clips, ripple delete it, and this is how it looks. So the shake transition works the exact same way, but in this case, we want to take into consideration the direction of the shake. So you cannot just cut at a blurry frame. You want to make sure that the frames match. So I'm going to make cuts right here because as you can see, this is the same direction. And then we repeat what we just did and voila. 
Last but not least, we're going to move behind an object or a subject. And this one is a little bit more challenging because we're going to be doing some masking. Now you totally don't have to do it. You can get away with not doing this, but I really recommend you to do it because it will just look a lot and a lot better. All we need for this transition is an object or a subject. So think about a lamppost or a tree or a person. It doesn't matter and it doesn't need to be the same object or subject in both cases. But you do want to make sure that you do the exact same thing with your camera in both clips. So make sure that you move your camera or your phone in the same direction. So for one more time, let's find out how to edit this. So these are the two clips that I'm going to be using. And as you can see, I have already slowed them down to 25% because I both shot them in slow motion. So all we need to do here is we need to place this clip on top of the other clip and then go to the effect controls panel and under opacity, we actually want to create a mask. Once we've made our mask, we can immediately tell that this is not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to tick the box inverted right here. Next, we're going to enable the mask path by clicking on the little stopwatch right here. And then we're just going to create keyframes for the different positions to make it look seamless. And if you want to learn how to do this in more detail, then make sure to check out my mask tutorial, which I have linked on the screen and in my description. And of course, make sure to hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments which transition you'll be using in your next project.